Okay, thanks for waiting. I just set up a live recording on YouTube because uh, I have some uh, followers uh, maybe watching this um, from my Western watercolor painting class, uh, joint class with uh, Robert Sherrill yesterday. We, I, someone are watching us on YouTube as well. And uh, but, but I cannot uh, really monitor that. Uh, so if you have questions, you can uh, in the comment. I will reply later. All right. <laughs> so um, today we are going to continue our classical Chinese uh, brush painting class. Um, by classical, I mean the early Chinese landscape paintings um, up to the Yuan Dynasty. Um, basically, the northern and the southern Song Dynasty, or the Song Dynasty. Um, so <laughs> last time we uh, have studied the hemp uh, wrinkle technique. Um, invented by two masters in the, actually pre-Song, uh, the five dynasties, Ji Ran, the monk painter, lived uh, across the, uh, the, the it, into the early Song, uh, served in the early Song court, actually. Um, so he's considered the early Song uh, master. And uh, in the, um, have you ever watched those videos uh, by James Cahill? Uh, if you <coughs> great. Uh, yeah, I, I think oh, yeah. you can unmute yourself if you like to talk. And when, when I do demos, I will mute you guys. Okay. Um, so if you watch those uh, Lancy lectures, academic, very. Uh, yeah, very nice. Yeah. You, I, I hope you just enjoy the visual elements there. Uh, I don't really <laughs> pay too much attention on his interpretation or his viewpoint, especially I'm uh, as a literary painter myself. Uh, I just realized that he has a bias against the elite painting, uh, the scholar amateur painting. Are you uh, or amateurs like me? We're, we're not yes. professionals, right? So. Uh, in, in Chinese art history, there are two main streams. Uh, the later, you know, the, the literati or the scholar amateur, uh, of course they have the, uh, the, the right of speech, or what do you call that? Uh, they're in court, they're high officials, poets and intellectuals. So they, they, they write books basically, and write commentaries and, and comments on, on paintings. So they dominated the, um, the, the Chinese art history. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't mean that uh, the, uh, the artisan painting, so-called by the literatists, are uh, inferior uh, because they are more technique oriented, you know, more detailed, more... Uh, you will see, what we're, what we're going to learn today is the academic painters or court painters um, professional painters technique, known as the X-cut. Because when you see X-cut, uh, you know, actually my wife was, when I prepared this lesson last night, uh, she said, I don't like this. <laughs> um, yeah, basically as a, um, I think, you know, they just be, you'll see, uh, appear to be more uh, kind of uh, less, um, Syrian are more kind of uh, uh, hard, or um, uh, it's hard to describe. But uh, I, I will say they are still very uh, worth uh, to learn. And you can kind of uh, soft it, soft the style a little bit and become uh, uh, more cultivated instead of artisan approach. Um, okay, let me, let me go to some uh, uh, paintings now. So this painting I did, uh, ten, I think 12 years 
Uh, it's probably um, t at least, uh, I think in 2007, it's 13 years ago. Uh, I was 48. <laughs> yeah, that's a, the pig a year. <laughs> okay, um, anyway, so this is a partial copy on the Shikishi board, not too big. Yeah, I can hold it to show you. And uh, uh, in a technique called the X cut, X cut, mm -hmm. X cut stroke. I made a video of this. Have you seen this video? Anybody? Yes. Have watched yes. Okay. Yes, I have. Okay, great. Um, if uh, uh, maybe I just play a, a few minutes, if it just show you a brief uh, what, what it looked like, because. Uh, I, I will do um, demos so you can play along, but let's just watch like a three minutes, okay? Let me see where is the video. Um, yeah, sorry. Hi, everybody. My name is. Okay, let me share the video. Where's that? Henry Lee from blueheronarts.com. Today we have a art lesson on the subject matter of uh, landscape painting. Uh, the topic is uh, what we call the X cut wrinkle. In Chinese, Fu Pi. This character means uh, X. And this second character means cut, what we call the twin lines, texture lines, uh, if you recall. And now uh, we are talking about uh, the surface texture or the uh, texture wrinkle on the surface of the rock. Here we have a teaching book based on an ancient uh, masterpiece uh, called uh, the a masterpiece done by Li Tang. I think I messed up here, did I? Uh, yeah, okay. I think the, the video is frozen or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I started uh, another window, it just stopped. Anyway. Um, so the X cut is the name of it. And recently, until recently, I discovered that traditional understanding of this term knowledge may be wrong. Because when we talk about X cut strokes, um, traditionally uh, we describe it as, as the, you, you see on the log, wood log, when you uh, cut uh, for firewood, you know, uh, with an X and you will see a, uh, the uh, kind of uh, texture, which is actually parallel and in the kind of similar to hemp tech. It, it, we do have that kind of uh, um, unknown, uh, you know, uh, wrinkles in early uh, uh, period of the Chinese painting uh, on, on a mural or uh, a, a especially a, a tomb. Uh, it's excavated the tomb with a burial uh, scroll uh, in the Niao Dynasty, which is on the north of southern Song border. Anyway, um, so that kind of texture is like a flying white parallel. It's the uh, X cut, but uh, um, not the um, exactly what that means. You know, this image is a primitive. Uh, old Stone Age or Paleo uh, Paleolithic. Um, let me mute, guys, so I can see. Can you see my or see my window? Okay, you can. If you you can pin my video, right? You can. Let me enlarge this picture. So okay. Um, on the surface, you can see the man-made. Um, what do you call this uh, chipping marks? 
actually this x could be used to um, make smaller, smaller objects or tools in the uh, uh, primitive uh, stone age. So th these are joints of uh, uh, like arrowhead or, or cutting, um, uh, not like a knife kind of thing um, for cutting skins. This is probably, yeah. If it's a po more pointed, it could be um, the, the arrowhead. <laughs> you, do, you, do you see this, uh, this marks on the surface? I think they are pretty much uh, look like uh, the expert surface texture, a wrinkle texture that we're going to learn a shaping uh, stroke. Okay. Um, and uh, this information actually I got from uh, a uh, exhibition uh, recently uh, held in uh, East Coast. I forgot which city. Um, Henry? Yeah. Those, uh, the marks on the arrowheads, which are done in, which are chipped out of flint generally, or chert, um, those geologically are called conchoidal fractures. Mm -hmm. Conchoidal Be fractures. Because they have this, this curve to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, and in archaeology, we learn how to distinguish the natural um, mark from a man-made. And there's a, there should be a hitting point and you, you'll see the radiation uh, kind of uh, mark um, from that point. Anyway, um, so actually this was the source of information for a great impressionist painter uh, in France, Paul Cezanne. Uh, Paul Cezanne has uh, traveled with a geolo ge 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 geologist uh, and studied rocks, including the um, objects he collected uh, along the trip. And his stroke marks, his stone painting, if you take a closer look, um, inspired by these marks. Why not, you know, the Chinese ancient masters <laughs> have seen this. I don't think they know this, but you know, their uh, technique is very uh, similar to this kind of X cut marks. I think that's just uh, um, my interpre new interpretation of uh, what's the, what that is. Okay. So <laughs> let me just uh, keep watching a little bit more of that demo um, and how we do that. Let me see. Hi, I will edit Paul. And uh, let me just go to the demo part. Okay. And you can get your brush and a piece of paper. You can use a, a semi-sized shuan or mobile paper, uh, also can consider semi-sized or uh, side paper. Because for this technique, you don't want to use uh, absorbent paper. In this demo, I use the hemp paper, it's the semi-sized. But uh, unsized, the raw paper will give you a hard time. It's the appearing cross that like you saw earlier. Uh, I find this brush is very We uh, handy. start with the outline of the rock or the contour. At this step, the line is drawn with uh, the brush uh, hold at a perpendicular position to the paper. So you can uh, you use only the, the the tip to draw this. But at, even at this step, you need to start the line with a uh, with a heavy start and a, a light ending like uh, here. So you start heavy and end in a, a tail kind of. So we call it uh, the nail, head, and the tail. Something like that. Uh, this is for the contour. Also, look at this diagram. There's an idea of a, 
uh, idea completes with absence of stroke, which means uh, when you draw a contour line or outline, you need to leave breaks in between strokes. Let the chi or the spirit travel. So um, technically, you leave room for the uh, texture shading or the wrinkle, the twin wrinkles to come, the surface uh, wrinkle to complement the uh, contour. So uh, let me illustrate that. So you can draw the rock not in a continuous uh, line, but leave some breaks like uh, like this. So you leave space between the strokes. And uh, the second type of uh, stroke is our focus today. This is the X cut stroke. It comes in array of uh, uh, quick kind of shading strokes. It's always a start like a heavy, uh, start heavy and end with a pouring, very quick pouring and lifting uh, movement. So you get a heavy start and a uh, light end. You can see this uh, magic uh, cross gets dry pretty fast. So you can practice this, this move like that. Uh, remember that not all the strokes should be the same or parallel on the real painting. So you need to uh, vary the size and the directions sometimes. Uh, here are some uh, ideas. There are two different sizes of uh, X-cut strokes. The small X-cut, you only use the front or the tip of the brush, so like uh, this. And you can see in the picture would look like this. Uh, you can complement uh, two directions strokes, you know, one up, one down, uh, down stroke, up stroke or left and right in a, in a uh, horizontal uh, in a horizontal surface. Uh, okay, um, uh, I, I stop it uh, because uh, I I think I, I better show you um, here uh, it live. <clears throat> so you can use a stiff brush, um, any, any uh, kind of weasel hair, a wolf hair brush will do, a uh, calligraphy brush, if you like. Um, it don't have to be a split brush. Um, I just use uh, this, this orchid and a bamboo brush. So we, we draw this, uh, uh, contour first. I'm using uh, mulberry paper. Number one, you can use number two also. And I use the smooth side. So first step is still the, uh, let's do this one first. It's called a um, big X cut. So if we have a contour, this is this could be an outer contour, but I make it uh, um, into the um, inner contour. So you first of all you need to um, to to do this along the the outside or the upper side or the left side. <laughs> you don't want to do both sides. You can, however, <clears throat> excuse me. You can uh, add uh, <clears throat> uh, 
on the lower part of this, this um, plan, and um, I, <coughs> I, I use the brush in, at a, a slant position. You hold it like this. Your wrist could be on the on the table, okay. And uh, yeah, the the ink should be about the same value, not too too dark, not uh, or a little lighter, a little lighter. So um, the contour tends to blend when you do this. So this, this part becomes uh, the yang, the lit, the light. And this is, this is yin. So one side is yin and one, one side is yang. Usually when you, when you shade or you shape the top, don't shape the, the bottom. <laughs> See uh, here, uh, I, I noticed that the direction does not go with, uh, unlike the parallel, parallel uh, shaping we learned last time, it goes along the, the uh, parallel to the contour. You don't have to, in this case, you can keep like uh, the same, relatively the same angle. And you can form, um, if you look carefully here, I, I just realized there is another, there is another um, contour line, you know, somehow here, but you know, I can do, do it without it. I can just use the um, array of, uh, uh, by aligning the starting point, I can create a horizontal line as well, right? So, but um, be careful if you, if you just, you know, make uh, all the, um, uh, all these lines, you know, too, too uh, neat. We do have another uh, subcategory of this called the uh, horse teeth, horse, horse tooth. Uh, it's probably, you know, just like that, a, a hair or a row of a, a parallel, short uh, kind of a X cut. You, you see, I, I sometimes I, I have longer, uh, longer strokes like that, but I don't really flick that you know, too freely. I, I still have this this kind of stop here. The, so I I try to keep them in the relatively same size, uh, or at least the, you know by uh, a group you know, similar. So you don't vary that much. Uh, you can have long groups or short groups. But you can do it uh, in three or five stroke. Uh, it's very important you keep the loose feel. You know, don't try to finish it in one step. And you can go back to use lighter or darker uh, ink to add more. But after it dries, so uh, just like the contour that uh, I mentioned in the video, you don't want to complete. Every everything you you don't want to have, you don't want to have a full closure of the contour, um, and you don't want to have a, uh, you know I know I I noticed the in in the uh, practice some, some students tend to put the dark uh, too solid too early so then you, you cannot change anything uh, just try to do it in several layers. Um, so it's very important to, to keep in mind uh, some, you know, some white. So this in the painting will give you illusion of light, you know, like uh, this line actually is unpainted, right? This white line. And this part is, is the nose of the stone, we call it uh, the highlight part. Um, okay. Uh, I'd like to show you the life size copy of the 
this painting. Okay. Um, this is a, a giant book. I think you can see it, right? The, I hold it in my hand. Um, it's a full size print of the original, which is uh, about six feet. Some of these are more than seven feet, you know, like the monumental paintings. Let me just open this book. Actually, it's a print. And uh, I know, uh, Clara, you may have a uh, Fan Quan uh, in your home like this, right? So uh, we don't sell this uh, in our store, but I, maybe I, I will. It's, but this is too big for most homes, maybe. <laughs> The hand in the in the uh, uh, temple or courtroom, you know, the public space. But you can you can in your home, of course, our living room, so you can travel on the bed. That's it. So this is the full size. Can you see it? Let me enlarge it. Okay, I, I just standing beside, you can see from, it's about, yeah, it's maybe five feet. For, it's a, for 188 tall, but this is not full size yet. It should be taller than me. I'm 147, 175, 76. So this is 188. So this is still not as original size, I think. But uh, we, uh, we can try to make a partial copy of that. Just do the, um, the peak part, as I did on this shipping uh, board. Um, here, here's the approach when we um, learn from this kind of monumental paintings. We treat it as second natural. Second natural, uh, like a, a, you you um, you study by first of all the composition, and then the uh, um, details, right? So um, when you look at the composition, we first of all we should do a outlined outlined uh, version of it, uh, like a composition. Let me, let me show you something that uh, may be helpful uh, to show you how the contemporary masters have learned. Um, okay. This this is a pen, painting. Um, this is a two paintings here. Let me show you. Oops. Okay, in this uh, example, you have a draft, uh, just like the first step, and then the finished step. When you actually paint it, uh, uh, when you copy, you don't need to copy all the details, and uh, he. Uh, his name is Huang Bing Hong. He's a, a very famous artist. He lived a very long uh, life uh, to the 90s. Uh, the, his, he formed his style after he um, got uh, very old uh, into the late 80s. And his uh, style is mostly formed after uh, his 90s. So he's a very, and in the beginning, he just outline everything from the museum. He was connoisseur, connoisseur and an uh, art historian. So he have seen hundreds and thousands of paintings. In, for each painting, he will make a copy like this. This is what we should do first. Uh, just make an um, outlined copy that like this, you know, uh, he will mark the, the name of the artist. Uh, and he, when he do sketch, like he would, he will paint, he would create a scenery, which is not what exactly uh, he see. Uh, here's the interesting uh, 
technique. In, in this, you, you can see where he started. This is a uh, diagram uh, they use by the academy teachers. I think they show the students the, with the sequence of painting. So you can see the pairs. We talked about yin and yang. Uh, he, he talks about uh, the uh, upward and downward uh, out contour, you know, the tai chi idea, yin and yang. So this is the first groove uh, starting from the nose of the stone in right in the middle and then proceed. Uh, I, I won't, I, I can send you this uh, on, the, on the website. Maybe. So, but this is the idea. So you, you do it in um, two strokes to create a shape in between. Like if, and then you can add smaller shapes. But these two lines are not the same length. One uh, yang, when in, when you know, one more <laughs> more powerful, more uh, the other uh, one opening, one close. Maybe. We'll talk about the opening and the close later in, in terms of composition. But this is just to show you the example of this artist. You know, I just uh, okay. Here, here's another uh, diagram. He he taught his student how to uh, use the brush tip. Even for the smallest stroke, you can see there's a beginning and, and the, uh, the uh, ending. So uh, and this is tip exposed. He, he preferred tip exposed, but the, you can also have this uh, tip high uh, hidden dot. So for even as, as small as a dot, there's a beginning movement, the high the tip or exposed the tip um, and then ending. Uh, so it's just like, a, calligraphy dot. And the, this stroke shows you the beginning and ending and has a calligraphy chi in it, vitality of its own. And he described the um, theory in, in Tai Chi. I, I used this uh, in my early work as a reference. So he called this uh, uh, the, the go and the le. Oh, actually this goes this way from left to right the, uh, in the pu pushing and pouring pushing and pouring, that's Tai Chi. So one line is uh, pouring, and then the, the other could be pouring, pour, pouring, pour, pouring, right? Pushing, uh, pu uh, pouring this direction, pushing on top. And uh, he's described those uh, uh, wrinkles. Um, in the beginning, you should make it uh, as neat as uh, the uh, the birds' feathers or the um, hairs on animals or um, rain jacket that, that, that made of uh, uh, the palm fiber, that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, there, there are many uh, things to talk about the, the use of stroke. Uh, we, we talked about the, the, the set tips concealed stroke for painting buildings and we'll learn the trees later. Anyway, <clears throat> so this is the, um, the, the uh, idea of a copy. And we will, we will start to, to do a contour for this painting, and then uh, we'll do the shading and etc. So uh, at the beginning, you, you can draw a, um, uh, with a charcoal or a pencil. I just use light pencil here. You can lay out the, let me put uh, on the, can you download the, the painting I sent you? You can download my copy instead of the whole original painting. Um, I, I just, I, I email you the link. I think uh, I can upload it here maybe. Let me see. So if you go to chat room, I can, or I can just show you this image first. Let's get out this. Okay, so that's my painting here. Okay, here we go. Okay, I just put on the, you don't have to see details. Uh, it, it, you just draw the layout, which is, you know, it's like, like you squint a, a, a natural landscape um, from distance. You only see the contour, all right? So you can draw this. And uh, on the original, they might be a little bigger. 
Another version. Yeah. So uh, there's a little more on this. It's like, I think it's good to just cut where I, I, I did. So we just do this one. Um, I just want to make sure that I have en enough room for everything. So I, of course, I will draw the top and I'll draw this, uh, this big uh, beak of an uh, eagle uh, or a stone nose. And uh, I just realized the first mi mistake I made is too, too much in the center. Although this kind of painting does tend to make the peak right in the middle, we want to put a little to this side. So you, if you use charcoal, you can dust it off, right? Very easy. So, Just geometric, uh, like a graphic uh, shapes. Uh, and please uh, notice the, the two uh, ground. I have cut off the foreground, but we will treat this middle ground uh, here with the waterfall uh, as uh, the foreground. I'm trying to okay, so try to to feel the, the movement of the chi. Okay, I try to unblock this uh, in the ancient theory of the landscape painting. Uh, it said that when you when you try to if you want to make the the mountain lofty uh, you know high, you want you want to leave some clouds in the middle in the in the uh, to use you know clouds or water fall uh, with clouds in the uh, in between the high fall and the lower fall you, you put clouds to make it uh, this is a very typical example of that. So basically, you should imagine, use your mind's eye, to, you know, what the finished uh, painting looked like. I really don't do any details. I just um, consider the placement of it because I want to give myself more freedom when I use pen. Okay. And let me do this. I, I, I think it might work. Uh, I just share this and I trace it, uh, retrace this with, the, with this. Um, let's see. Oh, I should share just the, this. Okay, sorry. So you, you can see a bigger picture uh, and I, I will draw with a digital uh, and you draw with a uh, charcoal if you have, let me see. Um, can I just enlarge this? Okay, now you only see this painting, right? Okay, let me just put this. In. You see a big one right now? That's my copy. I, I already simplified it, so that should help make sure we can finish this. Um, so I'm going to use a, a red brush and I use reference in front of me to redraw this. So this, this is where I will start this, this uh, um, This could go a little bit down. Yeah, 
you don't want it to do any detail at this point, just the, the uh, contour. Okay. And you, you can, um, when you actually draw, you can deviate a little bit, you know, I, because I, I have no uh, precise control on, on this mouth, but that's good, you know, it gave me some uh, interesting, this is too parallel. Let me go back and do it. And do it. I, I noticed the interlock of the original. And uh, you can have jacked, con jacked um, this corners because this, this is a stone mountain, right? In the north, in the um, Shanxi province, probably. Okay, this could be a little closer, but you can um, later put trees on top of it. So um, I think the tree comes after the rock, but um, uh, this original may have done the tree first uh, in this part. Uh, you have to use lighter ink if you, if you do that, if you do the rock first, I think. We have to figure out our own approach. You don't have to, because of the material is completely different. This painting, the original is done on silk. Actually, I have, I have silk. Maybe if you want, I can make a copy on silk. Maybe. Let me just finish this first, so we can decide later which one we're going to. I, I noticed there's a, almost like a, the a yin yang division line. You know, this side is more uh, in the shade. This side is more of uh, the yang, right? And the second part is dark. Henry, I can only see you, not when anything you're doing. Is that the way it's supposed to be? Um, I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, just... I must be on the wrong screen then. Okay. Um, let's see. Me... Uh, you're seeing my picture, but not the shared screen? Correct, yeah. Okay, let me... I don't know why. I Is, see uh, Victoria's you go to gallery screen. View. Is there anybody else having this problem? No, I'm. I can see you drawing with a red pen on. Yeah, on that's your, what I'm doing. Yeah, I could before, and then all of a sudden I can't. I can't understand. Uh, uh, go to. Uh, let me see. Go to gallery. Okay, you you exit the share. Let me re reshare it. Can I? Let me see. Okay. Let me stop sharing. And uh, maybe my drawing is gone. I don't know. <laughs> it should be there. I hope. No oh, weird. Uh -oh. All right. I there it is. Really... Now I well, I, now I can see the picture. Okay. Okay. So my drawing didn't save. I, that that's terrible. Okay. Let me just do a quick one. Okay. And that's what we're sketching. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Sorry to uh, disturb. No problem. 
So they can see it again. <laughs> okay. Actually, you know, it's, um, this is where I started the, the nose of the rock, right? Um, if you, if I go only got ten lines, what I do it? That, let's think that way. So don't which go part to is, de details. Yeah. Which part is the which part is the nose again? This part, right in the, in the middle. This this part, this white part, right? This this one this. Um, okay. Okay. Um, by Thank that you. we mean the protruded part, basically, right? Um, also the. Yeah, it's not the sinking part, of course. The nose is pr protruding part. So I tend not to add any detail. Once once I do that, it limits my later. Uh, Jokes, you know. So I, I try not to put in any details. As long as I have a contour that defines the top and the bottom, I'm fine. And then maybe I, you know, some division lines uh, that might help. Uh, you know, I, I, I was pretty free because I didn't do any sketch on this one. I just draw uh, with a pen directly. So you can do the same thing. Uh, I, I realized that my tree top is not perfect, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave this uh, for my later creation. So basically, you, you, you should have a main tree. Um, it's more distinctive and then some other trees. Uh, and notice this uh, shape, the negative shape. Uh, it's very nice. The tree top right there. There's a big tree top. Yeah. So maybe we should do that. Something like that. Um, you can, you can be, but yeah, just be more attention, pay more attention on the shape of the solar weight. Okay. Uh, the, here is the, the group of the uh, pines. And uh, leave some uh, uh, some on top and some little space in, in the uh, in the woods. And also here is the the shape the, on top of it. And I I made one of the the rock into a pagoda. And you can you can just do a rock. If the pagoda didn't work for you, just make it into a rock. That's why landscape is so forgiving. You can turn anything into a rock. If the tree doesn't work, just make it into a rock, right? That's the story. So that, that, that's my, um, okay, here, we have to do the, the distant mountains. On the original, actually, the distant mountain also have foreground, middle ground, and background. Uh, like as you see here, foreground, you know, darker. Uh, this one is the middle ground, and this one is the lightest. And the artist signed on, on this piece of rock, rock, little peak there. And uh, here we have the darkest part against the light. Actually, that's interesting in the picture. That's a focal point. And then we have this. Uh, uh, I made this slower. Actually, in the original, it, it's very tall. It's up there. So I think that we should lower it. Just to follow my interpretation here. And I do like the relationship between these two. It's one large, one small, the, the kind of small lean against that. This, this 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 part is almost closed. So this entry is very important. That the that the um, if you close this, the the clouds will be uh, dead. So just leave this entry uh, open somehow, but not too wide open like I did. Maybe and it, it has a very very. Uh, 
light is the mountain there in the sky. So this should be done without outline. It has outline maybe on the original, but this is uh, on the left side is father. I think that's one. Anyway, so this part is very difficult uh, to do for you. Maybe uh, just keep um, this leveled um, and then add a few rocks there and uh, just make the bank. Don't do the Dwight, just do the bank. So this is a big piece of wet uh, rock and this is dark. Uh, just to find the bank. Okay. And uh, here is the. And you know, uh, someone commented in my class the ampent part is more difficult, which is true. So why don't we just just draw this uh, this shape at this point we draw this shape of clouds you know and i use a uh, eraser okay so i think my line is a little too thick Oops, let me draw this thinner one. Doesn't be, oh, I think it is a format. format. Oh, I can use thin. Oops, <laughs> that's too thin. Anyway, um, so I don't really need too much detail. Let me save it and then send it to you. Show you folder, which is save, okay. Okay, um, which folder is that? Okay, so, all right, let me upload this so you can have a copy. Oh, I should draw the um, folder. I forgot that, let me see. Can I just open that? Oh, this, uh, two copies. I don't know. Hmm. Let me let me um, let me draw a uh, square. Then I will send it to you. Let me see. Draw the. What is that? Where's the shape? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Stop here. Save. Now I got two tools. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, maybe let me see if I can just show the drawing without the background. I think that's what I need. Sometimes we can do that, right? Let me just close this. Oops, that's gone. Okay, <laughs> I'm still learning this thing, but uh, it didn't work. I tried to save without the uh, <clears throat> the image under under it, but uh, it didn't work. Anyway, uh, I can send you this one with with the image on, but you can do your own drawing basically um, later. So I I'll just do. Oh, I got an ink stand to start my painting. Great, that's that's divine touch. I always like that. So that. That's my starting point. That's another um, note of the 
Let me just closer look. <laughs> My uh, stone nose could be a side view stone nose there. And I just follow the trend of this and see the jack, jack um, contour of this. But generally, it, it, it has a, a angle to go uh, this way. So it's not too straight, I think. It's OK. So you, you can use um, the uh, <clears throat> uh, vertical you know, tip, tip stroke like, a, like this calligraphy. So I don't really concentrate on just one part. I try to um, <clears throat> define the borders first, the boundaries first. And uh, try to define the layers of the rock. You, you go with the the, uh, uh, the blocks, blocking the, the, the whole shape. The, this is the stone nose if you, if you want to define it. But the, the inner line should be a little weaker, a drier or lighter, you know, so it will blend in. It will not, not so distinct with the contour on the outside. So this could be a little tricky. I, I really don't like the horizontal. Can we change that into more vertical to make it life easier? Well, let's do that. Let's do that. We have the freedom to copy to modify. We just take whatever uh, appears to us. Okay, we don't have to be the slave of the ancient. Okay, we have the freedom of creation. We, we're allowed to, <laughs> to change. Although we uh, will, you know, give credit. We say we, we paint in the style of or uh, mimicking someone, but uh, we, we don't really copy. Right? We copy the second nature, <laughs> which is the mountain, they have lived in the mountain all their life. They study the mountain. So we have uh, the uh, advantage. Don't have to. So I, I use pushing also uh, instead of drawing, you can make rough uh, lines by, although this style on silk, they tend to be more uh, smooth, you know, not so coarse. So I keep in mind where the the boundary, the clouds is. Don't lose that. That's the most important part of this process. Okay, you can you can start shading right away, uh, but I I try to save that until I finish the whole picture, the whole uh, planning, uh, or placement. This is a interesting shape that against the, the cloud, so be very careful. If you make some mistake, you cannot really cover it. This is, oh, I think I, I made a mistake here. So let me correct that. It should be, the, the model first should not be in the middle. All right, so let's see if I can do that. Okay. I did have this in the middle, that's why I think just where I have to move it to this side. Then. The 
committed ourselves too early with the dark, we cannot change. So that's why a sketch with pencil or, or charcoal is uh, necessary. You know, you don't really have to paint fast. See, when the brush is dry, I just go slow and then it's, it's pretty slow, but you, you can get more controlled um, shaping strokes as if you have done that in a swift way, but not really, right? So just, just kind of slow down. Some strokes, you, you don't have to really uh, do exactly like uh, the standard uh, stroke, you know, you can, you can, you can push it. You can do more parallel lines, like uh, almost like a, a previous lesson. Um, it doesn't matter the name of it, you know, just concentrate on the, okay, I just, just to remove this, this part. Yeah, landscape is almost like a portrait of landscape, it's like a person, or animal, you know, you need to, you need really to be careful with, uh, with the uh, <coughs> details. Okay, let me, let me um, try to spend my time more wisely so I don't end up two hours just doing half of the painting. You see how we got half an hour. I try to finish it, okay. So uh, let's start to do some trees on top. So you, you do the branches, I mean the trunk first, maybe along the, the, the line, you can draw this line, but some uh, in the front of the, the contour, right? So that's very important to draw this either behind or on top or in some in the front. Henry? Yeah. Can you, make the, can you make the original a little uh, more in the picture so we can see it? All right. Thank you. I sent you, uh, I sent you a copy of this. Okay. Okay, that, that's better, right? Well, yeah, we can just do this so you don't have to look at two, two places. Okay. So, <clears throat> The next is I, I use the horizontal stroke. You may overlap a little bit and uh, you vary the, the uh, length and uh, you don't have to be symmetrical, you know. Usually the pine is, uh, one side is longer, but it, in America, I think the pine is different. Maybe in North China also, the, the pine is, is more straight and uh, more symmetrical, it could be not like Huang Shan, you know, one side is long, just like the ocean side trees, you have one side longer than the other side. Like welcome uh, guest pine, very famous Huang Shan. But you don't have to do all the pines like that. But I can have some pines like here with a stretched arm, something like that. So just horizontal lines with uh, uh, some vertical lines, you make a distant, distant uh, trees. This could be lighter, but uh, um, we don't really have to think about the distant uh, in depth because this is a high view. Uh, yeah, it's almost the same. You know, when you look at here, your eye level is, is a, here, when you look at the waterfall, it's down below. So yeah, basically there are more details on this front. If we do this group now, okay, let's do the front. And uh, it's very important we create a contour. I, I tried to copy the original here, more um, interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'll copy exactly the original this time. This shape I really like. That echoes the shape of the clouds. 
So, um, that's the cron up there. And they said uh, this, this, cr this cron of the pi is like a Tai Chi uh, movement, like a yin, yin so or something. I, I don't know how to explain it, but if you go left, you go right first, it's something like that. And use um, pushing or rough lines. You don't have to complete, that's the idea. Just uh, use dotted lines, not too straight, not too curvy, just keep the gravity straight. And then have some arms. I really don't see the details, but I, I just created on my own uh, something like that. So basically, there is more uh, horizontal on top and then more uh, down branches like that. Uh, we'll learn details painting of uh, pine later in the class. Um, for this purpose, I, I just do it like this. So um, just just a, a, a short, flat uh, group of uh, like a fan. We, we used to do, I mean, if, you, if it's detailed in the front, you would do it group by group. But for this one, I just do it in a, um, like the continue the dot, uh, even, you know, and then add some uh, point. If I, if I enlarge it, I'll show you what uh, I do. Just like uh, like that, and you can overlap. So I kind of flatten this kind of groove that we'll, we'll learn later. So you you paint from outside in uh, with the tip of the brush. Just print with that. Or you can just dot, you know, something like that. Something like just dot could work, but with some um, variation, kind of from the. Also, leave leave a little bit space between the branch and the uh, the leaf or the needles. Okay. I I will do another tree. Where it high? Did you see your drawing? Cannot see, okay. Let's see. All right. It, it said that uh, there's no single inch of tree should be completely straight. Um, so just try to, you don't have to paint it absolutely straight. Okay, keep the crown flat, flat. Uh, that's a characteristic of it. But in this case, actually it's, it's a little bit rounder. Uh, it's just like the pine in, in our backyard, I think. It's uh, not really like the yellow mountain, you very flat crown, but I prefer that kind of uh, ideal shape. It's more characteristic of pine. So I try to make it flatter maybe than the original. Okay. <clears throat> And then there, there are smaller trees behind overlapping. You, know, you can have a, a somehow a leaned one. Interesting. It could be. Okay. And you can leave some some dance, some spars. 
just go through them, you know, how, how that works. Not, not just the parallel, just, just equal lines, just, okay, you can create some, of it. oh, this could be in the, some, you know, it could be in the front. And the, the, uh, the foreground tree should have more um, defined, uh, you know, uh, uh, roots details of root, we can suggest a little bit because this, we start from the middle ground. Don't worry about that too much. And uh, just, just suggestively a, a little root, one or two would be fine. So we can just, uh, uh, I, I use some modern technique. I just use this uh, side view, just like, a, you know, doing the, the uh, what they call rubbing first, and then you add, you use the tip. So just go with the side first, blocking the shape, and then add some, uh, some needles. This is for saving time. If you have time, you can do it uh, one by one with uh, you know, needles, only needle strokes, that would be nice. If you look at the, the masterpiece, it was you will see every stroke is a, like a needle scene. So we just do a, a sketch to speak of the original. Uh, yeah, because I have already defined some uh, some uh, um, needles here. Sometimes you it would you would show it as a pine tree. Even I I you know just use blurry, ambiguous uh, strokes behind this one. And pay attention on the shape of the, this outer uh, solar weight, solar weight, right? so the profile. So the way it's the French name. This shape, this shape will echo the shape of the cloud. Oops, I, I covered some white, my precious white. I cannot use, I have to save the white for the tree trunk. Okay, just rubbing, right. and that's my my tree. I can add a little texture on the on the trunk, suggest the barks, but not too much. All right. <laughs> um, let me do this difficult part, uh, the the waterfall, right now. Let's zoom in here. I'll try to get closer so you can see it. Sorry about the shaking. Let me just do it. You can see it. Let me use my, my version so it's bigger. You, you can see it, right? All right. So, uh, Use lighter. Ink. So far, I've been using pure ink. I want you. To, I want you to see clearly. So, but this this part to be a little lighter, I think. Okay. So first of all, I draw this uh, this horizontal line, the horizon line, maybe whatever you call it. Actually, in the original painting, there might be some. Uh, let me see. Uh, it's here. Okay. Uh, you can see what here. Oh, good. There is a rock that 
that something like that. So this is a rock. So you, you actually, when you paint the water, you, 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 you just do the rock, basically. You don't really paint the rock, uh, the, you squeeze out the, the water with the rock. So this, this might have a top plane, a side plane that's basically a black rock on the right side. And this side is relatively flat and it goes up. And then we just start from here, I think. Okay, let's just do this. And we'll make things easier for you. So that, that's just the jungle or whatever in the mist. Um, we'll just eliminate that. Just make it to like that. But it, this could be a little darker later. So that, that, that's the mouth of the, of the river. It's very light, very thin starting, like a little stream here. Lective painting, it becomes three branches down below, something like that. There's a there's a stream on the right. Anyway, just uh, two dots will do it. And here is a, a curve kind of thing. So you just do a horizontal plane. Actually, it's a slope on this side. A little slope. So that's in the front of makes the water turns to the right and then goes down. And before that, there's a little step there. You can, yeah, it's two stones, just one big one small, that's it. And then we'll just go down. Um, here is the, the main fall. Um, it should be bending this way. There's a, there's a small one. And then let's just do this. You can see on this side. And you can further divide a little bit more. And uh, there's, it's probably in the winter time. The water is not winter head. I mean, China is the rainy season right in the summer. The winter is dry in the north. So not much water. So there's big black wet stone in the middle and then there's a water on the right side. That's about it. Okay, that's the my fall. Okay, you can you can make this part more uh, yeah it just goes like a Z. Let's just push it back a little bit. Some adjustment. It's very uh, subtle. So this kind of thing, you have to be really uh, in detail. So the water, just keep it um, from thin, very um, narrow to thicker and thicker, uh, broader and broader. That create an illusion of uh, distance just by drawing the lines without uh, washing or anything, right? Now we can, we can use contrast, just darken the area around it, okay? And if it's too dark, you can use the color, opaque color to bring the, um, bring the light back a bit. But this could be too, okay. And maybe too dark, too dark, too, the dark here, but it's okay. I'm going to finish this detail here. So there's a tree, little jungle behind this main, so we can use a little lighter ink. And uh, a little groove there. 
So they're not not flat, not the same size. They're, they're shorter than this groove, indicating that this will change this one to middle. And uh, they could have some overlapping there. Anyway, I'm going to do the, the uh, building later. And uh, here we do the, the, the X cut. All right. This this part will do long ones. Uh, it's kind of almost like the one we we uh, we learned last time, the parallel lines. But uh, you can use a split brush tip, kind of flat. In this case, uh, I think in in the hemp, we we start. And I finished, you know, it was even lines, but this one is more um, rough. That's why the literati don't like it. It's not very nice in calligraphy, not, not uh, typically concealed. Okay. It could be very um, easy, you know, if you just reduce some of the the uh, blocks because we are smaller. We do much smaller than this. You cannot do all the faults. Just uh, um, another idea actually is to keep the. The lines, uh, if you start from light, that's a, an approach, and then you go lighter, da da uh, darker. But you can also just do the same uh, in the same as the contour, because this one actually blend in, make the contour into the shape, so to speak. So there's no line in the end, it's almost like a white line, negative painting, you may say. What time is it? Okay, one hour. We should finish before the class. So this is a, a, the uh, second part, part the, the dark part. You can use the tip of the brush or the side of the brush uh, either way. So here I I would do the large areas. I'm, I'm just using side of brush quickly. Just add very loosely some texture. It's very important that you go with the direction. So all the, the rocks are in same angle. Uh, this is the side. I use this. This the other direction. I use. Uh, the foreshortened side, maybe I use longer because they squeeze. Yeah. You cannot repeat wet into wet. You can always go back after it dries. The, the first layer, you just do like a 30%, it's fine. Uh, and so give yourself room to add. And remember to align them. Let's see. Yeah. I I I I tried to copy this original. Okay, so I, I got something new, not just repeat myself. Because I think that this is like a second nature, as I say. I, I feel it's uh, like um, looking at a real picture of a mountain, so I can uh, have a response to it. Almost like horizontal cutting, and then. Uh, 90 degree side. So almost like, uh, you know, the triangle stroke we did before. When you draw the rock, I showed you, uh, you can you can draw a rock like, like, like this, and then this, right? Or you can do, uh, so we, we just draw something like 
this combined so using the side and then the I mean the uh, narrow side and then uh, push and it's important to have this kind of flying white flying white the the, the rock with the flying white okay here is very subtle. We can leave more clouds <laughs> if we don't have time. We can always do that, you know, just use the clouds to fill in the space, which might be a good idea. And this is the inside of the mountain, it's a bit, a bit darker. Always keep an eye on the hole so you know where you need to put your strokes. I'm at, at this point. Uh, I omit this whole block, maybe just, uh, okay, let me see. I have to put something here that stops the eye. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. Hmm. Decisions. Um, yeah, I, I go back to my design again. So this is uh, this is the back, I think. This belongs to the back. This part, I confused myself. Okay. Let me do this uh, this group of trees. Now, this trees in the front of the uh, uh, rising uh, clouds. So. And just make sure this is a. Uh, in a different layer and use a little bit detail. So I use a one horizontal plus some uh, dots, very sharp dots. It's a little more detailed than the one on top, right? If you can see this, this one. So on top, I don't have these dots. On this, I use uh, mostly dots, not horizontal lines to represent trees. So the horizontal represents branches, the dots represent um, leaves or needles. Again, you can leave you leave a little space between the dots or the needles and the, the branch. You can, you can have it's on, on top of the line, not on the bottom. And I group them into several groups. Okay. And that's about and you have the tall one. I don't have clouds here. Okay, let me just should I use the gouache to recover it in this one? I missed that. Also, on the original, you can see the cloud, the clouds saved behind. You don't need much, but it's just a, a silhouette of okay. that. Okay. So let me finish. Oops, that's too dark. That's too dark. Too dark. Yeah, this could, uh, this, this should be the front uh, because this tree is taller. So this should be back.
it's pretty loose, you know, not press that hard to see, otherwise you'll get too solid. They're pretty squarish, the, the structure. And you can you can um, change directions occasionally from uh, this part. I see some uh, lines cut, cut this way. Instead of this way, cutting yeah, the pointing up, the pointing up like that. So it leads your eye back to the top. I think that's the idea. Going that way. And this is a, some bottom part of the rock. And uh, you can just use sight to, to scrub to, to hide everything there. To some chase to stop the eye from going out. This is the part. It should be a slider. <laughs> You don't want a tangent uh, crash on the bottom. You want to just kind of soften because the uh, mist may be you know, rising from the, the stream there. So you want to give some moisture maybe. Okay, now I just use uh, some uh, uh, light ink to do some uh, uh, scramble or uh, rubbing. You can wait it dry actually, so it will not bleed. Okay, let's do the top. Try to keep an eye on the cold. Once you have a dark, it's really difficult to come eyes. <laughs> Try to keep our light in the beginning is a good idea. So let me let me finish this part. Maybe that's a, a focal point. Okay. So there's a mountain behind. Mountain behind. Um, I got a jog of the water there. So. Okay, that's just my starting point. Maybe. Let me just start from this heel here. It's a small heel, very far, but there's a shadow in this area. It could be that, that little heel, it could be even farther. So this in the front it combines to this mountain. You can see I push the brush up to get the coarse uh, contour. I covered that dot very easily. And uh, just go down. Remember to save the white up there. Okay, so let's draw the contour of this. Uh, this Brother, maybe. This one is a little softer, more rounded, almost like uh, the other uh, style, just the par parallel lines, very thin ones. Okay. That's it. In the bottom, you don't want to use dark ink. 
you want this soft in it and it, it just it scrambled or tried to stroke and here, here too you know so the, this part you can have some further division of the uh, we call it uh, phases or, or dimensions, plans, yeah. Okay, now the, the uh, shaping and the texture, just a little, it should be less than this front side. And then the last layer, I, I'll just use clean water about that to start with. And then we just add a little dark dry brush onto, on top of that. You can just use clean water or even, you know, a little bit of the very light ink, just like that. And then you can darken the top with dry brush, very dry, and then some, some gray, not, not pure dark. Uh, just kind of skipping, it's, it's wet into, dry into wet, you might call it. Very, very dry. So don't change the stroke, you just add dry brush into water shape for that distant mountain. Okay. And here we got a little bit light. All right. And this one on this side, there are three different uh, hills. Uh, we do the front one, we can outline them first. These are like, we call the bamboo shoot peaks in Huangshan, uh, you, you see this yellow mountain. Okay, and then the distant ones, we don't use outline, we can only, I think on the original, it, it has outlines, very, very light outlines. We can use outlines on the second one. This this two kind of overlaps, and then the most distant one. We can just use color or light ink. We just use light. Ink. We don't use color in, in this entire painting. So this different heights also. This you know like the Chinese character mountain has three peaks, right? <laughs> Same idea here three peaks. The line um, could be used in painting, in writing, and in diagrams of uh, uh, the Book of Changes, the divine, uh, divine book, divination book, um, as uh, myster mysterious uh, symbols, like Tai Chi. They are man-made. They don't exist, but they carry the information of uh, the principles, the same as in, in nature. So, you, you know, you, you, you have to have dry, wet, light and the dark, all that to, to make a good painting, right? As in, in nature. This one actually could be warmer. There's a, there's a red in it. You can make a valley different here, just adding a little ink. Again, a dry on into wet. And just you can add water to dry brushes to soften it and, and just you know gradually soften it. And you can do a little dark on the on the peak of the mountain, maybe too dark. Okay. Don't repeat. It's it's a uh, you know it the the best is to just leave it. If you see it starts bleeding or smearing, just leave it. Um, okay. Let me see what time. We're on target, I think. Yeah, I try to save this light. You can add some darks to the sh to the shadow part. Just like a one more layer, 
you don't have to repeat. You can overlap them, enhance them, and reinstate from the part. Okay, here's under, uh, let's just make it, make it a rock by itself. So there are two kinds of uh, uh, signs representing different plants. The side is uh, longer, I think. It's almost like uh, the parallel. So, but you use um, tip of the brush, almost like, uh, like this, just like, like, like this. You know, just. It's more solid than, than the um, hand. And you can do a little preparation for the clouds. You don't have to shape it yet, but uh, just try to paint, uh, give a little structure, underlying structure for the um, mist. That's it. Okay, I'm going to see what they're doing and then we'll do some uh, coloring, uh, maybe. Yeah, a little color wash. Wash is is not uh, uh, the main as important you know approach as uh, today's paintings artists do rely more rely on wash but in the past they do everything with scramble the, the te uh, texture shaping already maybe eighty percent done with that. Because on silk, it's kind of hard to do wet wash, I believe, even today. So you, you have to do it uh, on dry, wet on dry. Okay. I just add some darks here and there. Uh, I, I should take a close, a <laughs> distant look, not uh, a close look. And just look at uh, the painting on the wall or some in the distance. And the painting will tell you where to, to go. Dry light on this. Yeah, I can use the tip of the brush, just like a flat brush, you know. That's that's what I did in most of this, uh, because this this is the back of Shikishi. This is the front. See, this is absorbent, and I can show you. This is absorbent, and then I can uh, do it like a on wallpaper. Um, but on on the other side, it's slippery. It it's not supposed to be. And it, it's more yellowish, but now uh, over more than 14 years, it turns like a faded. Well, I like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, this uh, gives a little accent. And we we'll try to see where is the darkest dark. This this area should be very shady. It's under the cliff here a little bit there. And this is of course the darkest part. That would mean the eye. This could be a little waterfall. You know, maybe we could we can try suggestively. No, no, no. I didn't save it. It could have a little bit white there. Just uh, suggesting. 
you feel like uh, water comes from the top. This is a little bit too dead. Too much uh, dead ink. The, there's a saying in Chinese painting theory, you know, um, it, the dance part should be so dense where there's no room for the needle and the sparse part should be so sparse um, where a horse can be allowed to, to run, to run, to, to gallop. gallop. Um, I changed it into, <laughs> actually uh, a master um, in Beijing, he, he changed it. He says, as a, um, a good painting, the dance part should allow a horse, even a horse to gallop, you know, there's still a sparse part in the dance. And the, uh, the dance, the sparse part, the void should, uh, should not allow any addition of a needles. You know? So that, that's the, the good true masterpiece, if you can reach that state. The dance part would not, would allow a horse to run into. And uh, you know, you should have some uh, space, not that. Um, a sparse part should not have any room for a needle. That's hard to understand, but that means it has, you know, it, 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 it's called the pregnant uh, void, which is uh, the state, you know, before anything is born. The, the things in the void should be there, like the cloud um, should have the, the chi in it already before you do it, okay. Now I'm going to um, let it dry. Let's see how you guys are doing them. I've oh, got some chat questions. I didn't check, sorry. Let me see. Mm, no question. No question. <laughs> okay. All right. This is so far what I've what I've done. Okay, let me see. Let me, let me put it on gallery view. I can see. Not that. as fast as okay. you. <laughs> okay, um, Susan Heyman, good. You've almost followed my steps. Susan Tabush, okay. Um, yeah, a little bit loose on the turn. You need to, um, that's what I said, you know, try to hold them. Ju just try to, to, to work on the tight, tightened part, the dance part to hold the, uh, where you, you interlock things. The, 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 um, the, the real dance part, you know, you, you need to make the dance part to hold Together, yeah. Okay, Pamela. Okay, your, your I have, rock I have should be a little uh, different in shape, uh, in well, size. Okay, Clara, very Henry, good. Henry, very good. I'd already started another copy of another painting, so I oh. just continued. Who, who's who is talking? Okay. I I don't know. It was a flea Pamela, market right? buy for Pamela. twenty dollars, but it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I see you have a lot of par uh, parallel formation. Uh, that could be uh, varied, you know, try to, to organize them into different uh, shapes, big, small, okay. medium. Yeah. So okay. um, to try to, to group, to create a formation of a different, uh, with different uh, shapes. Will do. Um, the, okay. the, uh, the Christine, good. Good. very good. Yeah, I see your your ego geek there. Um, just a little bit. Uh, um, um, compared to the original, yours is a little bit too round. Maybe try to square license it. I mean, next time maybe. So uh -huh. it's, it's still the problem. You know, the, the 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 in the beginning when you do the planning, you need to be 
careful with the whole shape before oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I just, Other, uh, after that, we cannot yeah. really uh, modify. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Daisy, your shading, your shading um, should be a little um, clear on the inside. <laughs> it could be the same, same. Uh, same dark as uh, similar, you know, to the line. So you you can eventually you can you can see the line disappears, right? The, yeah. the neon is, uh, it was a uh, is squeezed out, squeezed out. Yes. Yeah. You see it here. So this cut should be clear. Yours, you don't have a side that's white against the dark. Yes. That's the problem. Yeah. The yin yang, the anti tai chi uh, concept. Yeah. Hi, it's mine. <laughs> okay. Daisy, can you uh, see it? Uh, can you, you see? Yeah, it? you're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the light approach, so you can go slow and can you can adjust it along the way. Um, okay, so I'll I'll do more critique on the uh, on the in the in the site on online uh, website uh, yeah. later. So let me finish this for you to, uh, today. I already started the wash, but you can see it start to bleed uh, if it's too wet. So we, we dry it with a hair dryer. Let me see. I turn the microphone out. So let me just turn the, the speaker off. Henry, can you unmute yourself so we can hear what you're saying? Okay, I realize this uh, shape is too round. Maybe make a little bit uh, adjustment just to add a little layer behind. I'm being more creative this time. Just to add um, a light layer like uh, behind, I think. Let's see. This is not the same brush. Okay, let's just make uh, something very subtle. I just want to break that uh, roundness here. Okay. We can use, um, why I wait this, to dry, I can use just um, dry wash. You don't have to wet the whole thing. Um, you can start to add light or dark, you know, whatever. Just keep doing this for several layers, but remember to save the, some white for the cloud, for the white. We cannot use gouache <laughs> in the Asian time. They don't use any. Gosh, I think they do maybe. But ideally, you just save the the white background of the paper. And here, let me extend that. Hey, now I, I would wash the tree. 
we can do um, with the watercolor or I think we just use the traditional traditional pigments maybe. I got yellow chunk, I got indigo, and got some, uh, some amber. Just... So first uh, is to wash with uh, amber, I guess. Then we will do indigo on top of that to make it gray or greenish. Call this the indigo, indigo, and uh, in the original, I think uh, they got green, very subtle. Indigo and the amber. Yes. I use fingertips uh, to grind it. You can maybe grind it here. You can see that I uh, just grind it with a little bit water. Okay. This number is very subtle, so um, it will not uh, too too strong like a red color, you know. Like uh, so, I, I put on this yan side of the mountain, or the along this this uh, shining part, and maybe here. You can you can just. Do an overall wash. Maybe. Some, uh, I see amber on the river. Not, yeah, that's. Interesting. It got river uh, in warm color. Maybe that's a reflection. They already got impressionistic idea. The river usually is cool, right? But they got warm in it. That's, that's interesting. Let me just do that. Okay. Uh, actually, I got on this one too. Uh, this one. I think it's a sunshine. Uh, Peak. Let's see, we should have sunshine on this side and top. Henry, what color? What color are you using? Amber. 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 amber can chips. you give me the? Can you give me the number on the box because it's in Chinese and I have no idea. Um, amber. U U M B E R. We go. We we just use the name. Amber. Amber. I don't see it. That's weird. I have you, these little boxes, but I don't see them. I don't see a name that's in English. Oh, you have these boxes? You just open the yes. box, you'll see the brown. Right? Brown, okay, it's yeah. by, the number is 215008. Does that sound right? On the side, 215008 on the side. I don't Long see side. the number. The, the, this box you got? Yep, yes, cool. yes. Um, I can start video and show you, wait a minute. I don't, yeah. I don't see any One number. Of these. You don't? don't? 215008 on the side, okay. see these um, little boxes? Okay, no in, problem. In, in, the, in those boxes, we only have indigo, amber, and you know, this, you know a, just a few. So you just open okay. the box. Why don't you just open the box and then you'll see it, uh, what's inside. 
see, you will see what's inside when you open the box, right? Okay, um, let, let's just do an amber on most of the part, especially, I want to make the, I still have some white, you know, some, but because this is so thin, you don't have to worry about it. So let me just make a, the tree trunk here, very vibrant. This is my warm color. Okay, the a little bit chunk there. Let me see where. Yeah, there, there's lots of amber on the trunk of the tree, but I don't have much to do because I only have one stroke. Here I have the outline stroke. I have, but I still I have to leave a little white. Not that, uh, you know, to block everything. So that's where works. Just take easy. Take it easy. Just wash the whole thing, basically. And uh, except the white, the, the white. I we'll just do everything except the white. Okay, um, now you can add, but if you keep doing wet into wet, it will bleed, okay? So maybe it's a good idea to stop it from bleeding. I mean, to, to dry it. Yeah, just keep it light, uh, very important, keep it light. I'll just do the whole thing. And I'll try it. But I was thinking to save some uh, place where I do the indigo. So let me just try it. I can still leave a little bit of a white. I don't think. Yeah, I think to to make a contrast for the clouds and the, and the water to show, you just wash the whole thing. I think they have. Some color, even on the uh, some very light color on the background uh, because it's it's silk to begin with. Also, they have this uh, ink wash. I'm not going to do that. I think we'll wait for the paper to get old, <laughs> maybe turn yellow. And I see someone did a uh, tea wash. It's a good idea, but. Uh, this part is still lighter. I see it's maybe they use white. I don't think so. So let me try this. I turn the microphone off.
Okay, I'm back. Now I'm going to watch the, the indigo. Okay, I forgot to add water to this. But that's okay. It, it could be. Yeah, we've got plenty of them. See here. Can you see my palette? Okay, you can see it, right? right? That's my indigo. So I'll just start from the top of the tree. You can you can mute it with a little amber. I already have some amber there, I think, or a little ink. Otherwise, too bluish, maybe. But I, I, I didn't uh, blend the two on the palette. I just let it, let it blend on the paper. So let me see. I just basically repeat this. You can you can be very um, painterly to apply this. You know you can just use the uh, same uh, strokes like that. You can so that will occasionally leave some uh, amber underneath it. You know or you can just blocking like that. Just and uh, maybe work on the major major uh, blocks of light and the dark and just occasionally leave a a little bit white still, so it's not that the, 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 the unpainted part is the most important, important to keep, you know. So I try to make this part the highlight. So just darken that. And uh, just add to the shady side, in, inside, leave the more uh, um, amber on the right side. We'll do that. And you can, I think we can wet uh, the cloud part. That's a water management issue because if I don't wet this area for the white cloud, it will bleed. It will bleed and create uh, a, a stain. So. What I do is I wet this area to, to prevent it from the water coming in. Okay, but I, I also wet these trees. What's going to happen is this would bleed. Um, so you have to do it in different times, maybe. The ink is not dry yet. Yeah, it's, Read. Anyway, let me watch this. So this is the shady part. I will make it dark. But still, there's some light in it. So not that there's some brass in it. Some place you can even run a horse. That's what uh, I just learned. So not just the sparse part, the dance part should also have void. Bits of white, uh, bits of uh, warm among cores that will help. Okay, I, I would give all the ink a little color, so I just paint over the dark also. It would make it a little Green, I mean blue. Just make it easy. It's almost like flat wash, but I still, you know, dry brush a lot. I don't have a shape for the clouds here, as in the original. It has a round. I don't know. Is squeeze out with the uh, mountain, but I do leave some. Uh, see that start to take shape, and here we just. Uh, yeah, it's okay to separate them. I think. Okay.
So I was somewhere at some time. Well, this is the shitty part. It has some light in it, you know, dry brush. I just show the warm dry brush. And you can use water, just, I don't know if it's a good idea or not to kind of make it softer. Modern, uh, harmonize, harmonize the whole thing here. Okay. Oops, it's kind of dark. We can add darks to the dark area. This, I see a reflective light there with a, some Wrong on this side. That's impressionistic, <laughs> very impressionistic. Just some some uh, uh, hollow, maybe you know, warm around the around the, the edge of the cloud. It's interesting. Okay, and uh, some some dark. I use a little bit. Uh, a uh, little bit of uh, glue here, just control the bleed, you know, just in case. Okay, now let's do this part. Oops, a little bit too much. I think uh, the the tree has a hollow of a warm here. That's, that's very impressionistic. I didn't realize that, but I'm more sensitive to warm and cool after I learned from the uh, watercolor. Whoops, let me just make it this cool. It's fine. It's kind of dark. It would turn light, like, just like a watercolor, you know. I like that glow, just to add light to the top. It's a glow of a warm. Interesting. I didn't realize that. But I think it's uh, just experimental. Normally, I want to put a warm on top of the cross. But this may be a... Um, because this, they have a kind of a sunset or something on the peak, you can see one also. This part, let me see, I just add a little one. Cool. That, uh, that's a real nice touch. I like it, the, the cloudy peak. Okay, that's. Uh, that's about it. I think I could have done this distant peaks with a green only without the ink. Let me just add that. But you have to be very careful. This is a, it takes practice if you dare to do this. 
kind of you cannot repeat it or make it blur or something like that. Okay, just darken that top. This is a cool against the wall. Cool. Looks like the light is from top and the left. I don't know. Or okay, according to Huang Binghong, the uh, master I showed you earlier with the sketches, he observed that the Northern Song Mountains are all a depiction of uh, uh, the backside of mountain, the north side, the shady part, so they don't have much uh, light. Uh, all the the light, uh, the night, night uh, mountains. So when they when he traveled in Huangshan or in Sichuan, I forgot which mountain, he he uh, he would do plein air in the moonlight uh, without sleeping <laughs> because he thinks that's the landscape he saw in the ancient master uh, Song dynasties. They did they, they do night mountain and the back lit or uh, back of the backside of the mountain in the shade, shade in the shade. So there's no no light. It gives you a, a more um, pre, you know, like a feel of the mass maybe instead of the the illusion of the. Uh, I don't know how to describe that feel. It's uh, pressing. Just the, like over over you, the weight, more weight, uh, more like a, a mountain. What the feel of the, the majesty, yeah. all. Just you know the mountain for the Song Dynasty masters. I I talked about that philosophy, is from the. Uh, the Taoist uh, uh, or neo neo Confucianist uh, uh, cosmology, they think the yin yang uh, produce everything. And uh, later in the uh, Song Dynasty, uh, with the development of uh, the mind school of neo Confucianism, they emphasize on the mind image more. What you uh, what do you feel is uh, more expressive of. Uh, um, one's feelings. So that's why uh, we got this amateur school uh, of uh, painting. Did you see that uh, auction piece that uh, I I showed on, on the site um, by Sudong Po? Let me go through of uh, those. <laughs> to, to close the lecture, maybe we should talk go back to the scholar rock uh, about uh, how to appreciate the shape of the rock. Because in, in the um, Confucianist um, view, the, uh, there are two kinds of uh, uh, images on form. One is co with constant form, like uh, uh, houses, uh, trees, or uh, uh, figures, animals. You have to make it uh, make it uh, uh, to look like. There's another kind of uh, uh, objects is with incons inconsistent uh, form, like rocks, but they also are governed with the same consistent principle. Uh, this is white. Actually, looks like a dark. Can you see it? It's, it's water, so I prevent the water from coming. But this would, at the same time, create a soft edge. So that's a, that's a, another. Thing. If you want a hard edge, you don't want these. Uh, just be very careful. But uh, this is maybe too soft. So consistent uh, form or inconsistent form, both are governed by with the same yin yang ideas. And with uh, the rock, you can create on your own. Um, you can give it life, um, give it chi, and uh, um, it's more a kind of a, a zen 
sudden school of Zen is uh, emphasized on sudden enlightenment. Uh, that's kind of a trend towards the uh, uh, painting in the late Song Dynasty. Now, this actually we studied is a, a Southern Song Dynasty. It's a, um, the second half of the dynasty. We we start to see a trend to simplify, to uh, paint just a corner of the landscape, not not the entire and uh, entire mountain from bottom to the top. Okay, so let me let me try this. So you can see this uh, cloud in true color. Henry, can you unmute yourself so we can hear you? Sorry. Yeah, I, I just tried uh, it so you can see the cloud shape. But uh, if you, you know, if you just wait, it's better. Uh, however, if you see something happening, like a two uh, blur, you can stop bleeding by drying it. Uh, after this, you can keep working by um, awaken some of the uh, the strokes, you know, it, it maybe add a little dark, you know, to the trees, just to bring it back, or uh, dark, you know. So, uh, basically, it's done like that. Um, in the ancient time, they signed on the corner and the tree trunk, or you know, on, in this case, it's in this in this peak. You won't look at that right there in, on the on the distant peak. I'm not going to do that. I will just write. Um, Oh, I didn't do the pagoda. Should I do that? I don't have room. I think I just did uh, another mountain here. So we'll, we'll omit that. I'll just write how to you, you how to uh, attribute to, to the master. And we'll say mimic. Mimic means that you 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 didn't copy. You just paint in the style of someone, right? Um, if you don't mimic, you can you can create uh, in the style you know, just uh, from your own mind without uh, having the masterpiece in front of you. That's what we call the uh, uh, more in, in empathy. Right? I, I mentioned that that word empathy. So you enter the spiritual mood um, word of the master. You can't like him, but uh, not uh, in the style of him, but not a copy at all. That's more. So two words. Here we call it fang. Fang means uh, um, mimic. Fang Li Tang. That's the artist name. Li is my same same family name. Tang like the Tang Dynasty. He was the um, 11th, uh, not him, Zhao Mengfu, yes. He, he probably has a descent from the Tang Dynasty. That's why it's Tang. Another artist I, I tried to, uh, I, I put in the note of this lecture, but uh, we didn't have time to go through. Uh, if you look at my writing, uh, it's uh, the 11th descendant from the Song Dynasty, and he lived through to the Yuan Dynasty, Zhao Mengfu. The Tang, uh, I think that's it. You just to say uh, in mimic Li Tang, everyone knows. He has a, just a Let's few. Talk about a little bit about the dragon mane, dragon spine, this piece. Oh, okay. Uh, some question about the dragon man. I'll let me finish this first. And uh, I'll put a year of uh, that. Uh, it's a genzi, right? Genzi. Oh, 
Oh, let me just write the, the comma era, 2020. Two thousand twenty. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, Xiaohui, my Chinese name. Okay, just put a little seal. The seal you use on landscape should be small. Uh, also, I write small because. Uh, if you write big, you will destroy the proportion. Okay, that's uh, my last name, Li Xiaohui. Uh, that contains the. Okay, um, the dragon vein, right? The the dragon vein in this picture may not very obvious, but uh, it it has. Uh, this tendency to go from here, maybe starting from this side, from the, the right, uh, and then travels like, like that, and goes up here. So that, that's, and even you know, on this small one, it has small wing. So it's the, the uh, ridge of the mountain, but it's invisible. You should really um, concentrate on, uh, you know, but if you will know it when you make a mistake, if you give me a sample of uh, your painting, you know, in the car, I can show you how to correct that. That usually it has to do with the vein. Like I mentioned uh, last time, I don't know if you are see this part. Um, so if I make a, mountain formation with a piece of uh, fabric, you know, like uh, here's the peak, right? And here's the, the vein, the trib uh, tributary or the uh, uh, vein and the uh, arteries, arteries, right? Yeah, so this, this, this is the, the, the whole thing is called dragon vein. You can see the formation of the, uh, I don't think you can see anything dark. But here you can see really. So this is the, and it, it, a good painting, if you lift the top, you, you can, you feel it, it, it's like all together, you know, you can, you can, you can hold it, you can it hold together like, like that. It holds together. Um, let me, let me talk about a little bit about, uh, uh, this class I just take yesterday from uh, Rob, Rob Cheryl uh, in the landscape uh, class. Um, here's the dragon rain, right? Uh, in our Mustard Seed Garden Menu book. And uh, we talk about the, the peak and uh, how the mountains uh, form. Uh, some are- The mines got all bugged up. Okay, can you mute yourself? Let me see. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, Rob has a very interesting theory. Um, I think that that's that may help with this kind of uh, uh, hierarchy. Uh, this is a, this is a, his, a, his a, I'm using his handout. Can you see it? I can also draw with a whiteboard. You know, what can he talk about? Give me a few minutes. Just uh, let me do this with a whiteboard. Okay. So if we draw this with a uh, black, okay, that's what we got. Uh, okay. He says in the, in the top of the mountain at the 1,000, maybe uh, 10,000 um, feet level, you, you have this jagged, just like you know, the Chinese character, maybe jagged peak, right? 
and then under that at uh, maybe 5,000 uh, 5, 5, 5, feet level, you will, you will have this uh, round round peaks. So the rocks on the top is more squarish. That's what we did today, right? And then under that, it become like potatoes. And eventually, when it goes down to the river, it will become pedals, more, 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 more like that. That's his, uh, his uh, theory about uh, this. Does that make sense? OK. Another, um, another interesting drawing he did is this. When asked how to paint rock, how to paint rock in watercolor or Western painting, and his, uh, he, he used these diagrams. Let me repeat that. Thank you, Rob, for sharing this. Let me clear everything. And then we do this. OK, so all the rock should be considered as cubit in Western painting, but not so squarish. So it might be something in between a square and a round shape like that. Right? With the uh, plants in Western painting, we call plants. You know the plant? Plants, plan, like an airplane, but. Uh, yeah, planes, yeah. Planes, yeah. So, like that, right? So, uh, under certain, certain kind of uh, uh, lighting, let's say light comes from here, you will see shadows, shady parts. We, we will use shaping. Um, to, you can use the X cut, you know, or, or hemp, whatever, to describe, to, uh, but in, in Western painting, they just um, paint the surface. Um, actually, the, the, the surface texture we use uh, serve a lot of like, like this shade shading, but we don't have this, what we call uh, in Western concept, the, the uh, uh, casting shadows. But we do have a um, we do have this uh, uh, dimension. We we might call it uh, sunken, um, just like a, like this part. You know, it could be deep, like a uh, sunken or dent dent uh, part, hollow part. So, uh, but we we do, we don't really do the shadows like that. Um, try to avoid potatoes. Uh, if you if you have that, you can you can break that with a uh, overlapping overlapping again and this behind. So, but don't do this. He would use uh, some grass to break that line, the bottom line or bushes or whatever. I will show you his painting. Um, so, but you put the shadows also under, under that. Shadows also on the ground just to ground it. So, but you can notice, you know, here, it's the same thing we talked about in Chinese, uh, another character, uh, Chiu uh, Hill, the, the, the pictograph, right? So this is so so interesting. So I mentioned in, if you go to YouTube, you can see um, the the interaction I had with him yesterday, and uh, thank Rob for sharing this with us. Um, okay, so the, that that's his drawing. He did. It's so amazing that he didn't study Chinese painting, not uh, Chinese landscape at all. But uh, look at how he he draw his. Uh, uh, rocks, overlapping rocks and the uh, shape. Okay. Does it help? Where to put, oh, he mentioned where to put the shadows yeah. uh, also here. You can see the shadows uh, uh, 
because suppose the light source here, like we did today, the shadows on this uh, left and uh, right side. Um, and also you can see that that shadow behind the yarn. So we, we use the same uh, different uh, uh, description, but um, we don't have this source, but as in most cases, the, the light uh, on top, right? So, uh, and the yang be, uh, in front of yin. So that's, and yin against the yang here. So that, that's how it works uh, in Western painting. The same thing in here in, in uh, classical painting. And let me show you some other works I've done with rough. So this is my exercise, my color um, rough. Uh, just quick drawing. And I, 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 so I use more Chinese brushworks. Let's see that. Okay. And uh, before the class, I used my uh, my uh, piston brush to do this sketch as if I, I did a uh, field sketch. And I used this Zhao Meng Fu, uh, the descendant of the Song Dynasty into the Yuan. I mentioned uh, uh, his uh, scholar rock technique. Uh, look at the details. It's almost like a uh, grass style, cursive style calligraphy. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, so that's the difference uh, between Chinese. And, so you can easily use this in the Western painting. Uh, let me see, I don't have it. Of course, I don't have his, uh, his uh, painting. Okay. Here's a copy. I, I was, uh, if you'd like, we will do this next time, the two time with uh, rock. I already showed the original in, in the classroom. We didn't have time to go through that. Um, so next time we'll learn times with uh, rocks. How's that? Okay. okay. Yes. That looks great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is my Yosemite. You can see Chiu, again, that, that uh, Three, three division and uh, this mountain, almost like two right here, everywhere. It's like, uh, okay, thanks for letting me finish. Uh, stay safe and see you next time. Thank you, Henry. Thank, Thank you, Henry. Henry. Thank you, Henry, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. I tried to buy the book uh, that you, the, the book on ax cut, but it's 